Uh, let's see what Claire Pierce will think. She's a former Conservative government advisor. Good morning to you. Good morning. Question. Did you, when you were working at the Home Office as a government advisor, did you ever clock off at 6pm? No. No, the short answer is no, because there was always chaos in the Home Office. So even if you left London, you would still be working, still have your laptop with you, still have your phone yeah. with you. So it's, a, it's an admirable it's thing it, he wants yes. to do, but I don't think you can say it. It is like, yes, is it him saying it that's the issue? Yeah. Again, often when people are in, you know, they're in the This Morning studio on TV or the, you know, Chris Evans' Virgin studio, they're a bit more relaxed than if they're talking to a political journalist. Um, and it's a more relaxed conversation, and it's like the conversations you get, you have with these people at you know, a social event or a work, you know, you actually get more out of them um was it you know was it a wrong thing to say a wrong thing to think or wrong thing to do because realistically look there are, there are jobs i've been i was a political editor okay and and virtually every woman who's been a political editor for a national newspaper who's had kids stops doing that job after yeah. at least maximum a couple of years um i i decided very early on even on maternity yep yeah, this isn't going to work for me i'm I'll, my husband has a normal job you know we at least work at like 7 30 in the morning get home at 6 30 so not don't work long hours running his own business as lots of people do mm. monday to friday we i'd be at work on a saturday um uh, we, we'd only be together as a family on a sunday and i'm like that's not going to work that's not the sort of family life i want and the, i couldn't change it. rather than go oh i insist that i want to be a political editor and not work saturdays <laughs> on a sunday paper i'm not an idiot you know so so I think women could probably demand that now. I'm not sure they should be able to. Um, so I, I left that job and I, and I, and I became a commentator and, and a columnist and things instead. And it worked out really well. But there's an element where if you want to have the job of being PM, you're going to have to accept it's going to impact your family time. And I think he's trying to be all things to all people. By having that conversation saying, I want to carve out time for my family, he's pleasing all of those people that think that family should come first. And and yes, everybody wants to put their family first, but we have to also work. And the job of Prime I Minister... I put my family first by, by paying the mortgage. Well, precisely, keeping a roof over your head. Surely that's got to be the, the thing that's right at the yeah, top feeding, of your list. Feeding your children. Yes, clothing your children, putting shoes on them. I get it. I understand that you'd like to have some time to have dinner. And in uh, 2010, we did see Nick Clegg taking his uh, kid to school three days a week to try and keep up with, with his fatherly duties. But realistically, just yeah. don't say it. Would yeah, anybody I, notice? I, I wonder whether it's a lot easier for men to say these things than women. And oh, that women would be imagine? absolutely taken apart for this. You're not up to the job, you're at the job. But I, I don't know. I think I've, I, I just, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I really would. Because there's a part of me that goes, mate, you're in the wrong job if you think you can clock off at 6pm on a Friday. I mean, I'm assuming you, you, they, they all all MPs work over weekends. I've yeah. got, you know, forget even being a junior minister, let alone prime minister. It's a 24-7 job. Yeah. The pressure is relentless. You can see how much people age. You can just Can't. see it. You know, I never resent, you know, when they go off and they start having their personal trainers and <laughs> jogs and everyone mocks them for it. But no, just trying to have some time when you're just doing something a bit normal and looking after yourself because it's such a relentless job. But, but that's part of the deal. Again, leads us very nicely into the conversation about Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Um, both very elderly, but 78-year-old Donald Trump, was it 81-year-old uh, Joe Biden? I have to say, my parents are 18, 81, and they're in a lot better nick than Joe Biden, yeah. is, that's for sure. Um, uh, but... Um, <laughs> There was all that debate after that uh, debate about Biden's future after the presidential debate last Thursday night. Now the attention has turned right back to Donald Trump yeah. and this extraordinary US Supreme Court ruling. Now, this is a ruling. It's quite a complicated affair uh, over whether or not Donald Trump should be allowed, should face prosecution over his role in the 6th of January riots in 2021 at the Capitol in Washington when he's accused of encouraging his supporters to gather at Congress to oppose uh, the approval, the vote that day, it was due that day for the 2020 election win for Joe Biden, um, and also subsequent attempts to overturn the 2020 election result. Now, there's a big, there's a really very big question marks about whether he actually encouraged people to go and storm storm the capital he certainly did nothing for three hours while the capital was being stormed to call for mm. calm and when we know we, the evidence has been you know in all these inquiries in congress we know for a fact that you know most of his advisors he's even his own children were begging him on the record you please put out a tweet yeah. please go on camera make a statement tell everyone to leave congress because and, and people did die some people died of a heart attack there was people feared for their lives it was absolutely horrific event now a ruling yesterday by the Supreme Court, six to three. Six justices are Conservatives, three of them appointed by Trump, mm -hmm. uh, three are, are Liberals. Uh, justices have the first time that former presidents have 
absolute immunity from prosecution for their official acts, but no immunity for unofficial acts. But they said they, they want the lower courts to work out precisely how to apply this decision to Donald Trump's case. Now, they're going to have to decide, was he acting officially or was he acting in a private capacity at that point? The the American, the current American president, Joe Biden, uh, has uh, said that basically this basically undermines the rule of law. He says it sets a dangerous precedent, um, was ter did a terrible disservice to America, uh, and uh, and he said it means there are virtually no limits on what a president may, de may do. This nation was founded on the principle there are no kings in America, each of us is equal before the law. No one, no one is above the law, not even the president of the United States. What do you make of this ruling? Other than it being extremely complicated, I think that it's just going to delay any court action. Yeah, now, there, there were. It wasn't going to happen before November. It anyway. wasn't going to happen before November anyway, and and Trump will use this now, especially in the election subversion case that you just mentioned. He's going to use this to drag that out even further. So you can see that the only people that are, are going to benefit from this are going to be the lawyers involved, um, the Supreme Court. It. It looks as if it's made that judgment, but it's asking the lower courts to go and look at every single yeah. case against Donald Trump and see if it applies in those yeah. instances. Because some of that and would that's... be election money. We have, yeah. we have that distinction, don't we, here in the UK? So, uh, you know, you work for you know, a special advisor. Yeah. OK, if you're travelling as a special advisor to a Home Office minister, then your travel travel is paid for yeah. uh, by the government. If, however, you're going on a, a, a Tory campaign trip, then it has to be paid yeah. for by the Conservative Party or by yourself. And, and, and even... even down to sort of the letters that an MP sends. Mm -hmm. Is it sent in a capacity as an MP or is it sent in a capacity as a as a as the political party? In which yeah. case, can you use a stamp that's been paid but it, or, yes. no, or no, yeah. even headed note paper paid for by the taxpayer? And we we got really quite strict rules about that. So that's what it comes down to. When he was speaking at that campaign rally, when he acted later, even though he was president, were these in his personal capacity, whether in his capacity as a Republican or whether in his capacity as a president? And that's a worthwhile distinction. It, it certainly is, and I think America needs to look at its whole system when it comes to, oh, to politics. Yeah. I mean, yes, we have very strict rules in place, and that's good because everybody knows what they are and everybody has to abide by them. Now, in America, the lines are very blurred between what is considered to be a party political rally or what is a presidential mm. rally. So I think anything that can come and have a look at those sort of um, items it's got to be welcomed yeah. because it, you can't have people just getting away but, with things. Yes. But, but the funny thing is, but matter of times people say there's never been a, a, a president in office or post office who's ever been prosecuted for any crimes in office. Yeah, but that was a decision of, uh, you know, that Johnson, he pardoned Nixon. So the VP takes over and then he pardons the guy who appointed him to the job. Yeah. I'm sorry. Nixon should absolutely have been prosecuted yeah. for Watergate. Absolutely. <laughs> now the you know, thing is, there was an argument. Well, you know, he's already been you know, utterly, you know, exposed and uh, and admitted, you know, admitted wrongdoing. And uh, but any the point is that the law isn't equal for everybody because yeah. everyone else in that scenario would be prosecuted. And the argument has been over the years that actually, you know, just let you know, move on, let these things go because that's better for sort of. Uh, you know the, the 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 cohesiveness of society largely not to have these sort of trials, and that really is the reason why Donald Trump was not prosecuted after he left office in 2021. For a lot of people, people arguing that he sh these cases should have been yeah. brought sooner, um, the argument was that like, he's done, dusted. That period is over. Uh, there's, there's perfectly legitimate cases, but they decided to drop them because you know that's you don't prosecute former presidents. Well, when he became a potential future president, yes, it was definitely political, the decision to prosecute him. A hundred percent it was a political decision. But but he should have been... Any other person yeah. would have been prosecuted if they weren't if they weren't, hadn't been president. Well, this is it. And if you're uh, the average American on the streets, you'll know somebody that's been convicted of, of, of some offence or whatsoever. Yeah. They won't have had the same treatment. Mm. They would have gone through the judicial system as as, he, as they should, and the result would be yeah. either they're imprisoned or fined or whatever it is. So to see the president or, or hopeful president being let off, I think, sends a really bad signal. Yeah. But, but, but well, he can let himself off. If he gets elected... He can. That's next January, he's in office. Donald Trump can just... Yeah, he's in charge of the Department of Justice. 
no thank you very much uh, we'll, we'll end those trials they won't happen but um, has any of this dampened uh, people's love no. for Donald Trump and in we are what nine days off Donald Trump being uh, uh, facing uh, his sentencing very unlikely to go to prison I mean we, it would actually be an outrage if he was sent to prison yes. for, for what he's been convicted of in, uh, in, in, in that New York court simply because no one else it would not be the norm uh, that that would and so that would be that would be deliberately uh, uh, un unreasonable um, oh gosh just breaking news by the way very sad I'm, I'm going to Wimbledon late this week Andy Murray is not going to play in the Wimbledon singles uh, no news yet on whether it's going to play in the doubles or not mm. but being that's just really sad if his news um, if, if this news is true um, because just you know he's been such an amazing yeah. amazing player and I know he wants to go out, out you know he's gonna have his he knows it'll be his final Wimbledon he wants to be able he wants to be able to say goodbye on the court in Wimbledon. I think it's a real shame. A man that's put so much into tennis and it's on got his quite a lot very... out. Well, yeah, he has, but he's <laughs> Whenever also... Whenever he always pretends that people, they put so much into football or into tennis. No, look, these people, I mean, they, they're multi-millionaires. They've got a lot of, they've I'm had a very nice life. That. They do it for themselves. And I've nothing wrong with that. It would be really nice to be able to see him out on centre court for the last time. Oh, and he's already just... said that this will be his last uh, tournament. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a shame if that's, if that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, let's uh, let's go back to what uh, Keir Starmer has been saying about other issues. Uh, interestingly, um, other than not working past six pm, um, trans women with a gender recognition certificate, which is only a few hundred people, by the way, but it would be much easier under the Labour plan, which is you won't have to go. I mean, even currently now, you don't need to have a, a, any sort of uh, a hormone treatment, any sort of surgical treatment whatsoever. You simply say, I, I be, I'm, I'm living as if I'm a woman. Um, I believe I'm. A woman, and and then two doctors can sign you off. And very few people actually have gender mm. recognition certificates. However, it'll be much easier now. You can literally just wait two years. You sign, you know, one doctor signs it off. You wait two years. You can say you are legally a woman. You can have your birth certificate, your passport, your driving license. Every all of those things could be changed to a lie to claim that you are you are female when you're not female because it's not possible for you to be female because if you're born male you can't be female uh, very 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 simple uh, stuff there um but um uh, we so um but we are um in this situation he's been asked about whether or not a trans woman i.e a man with a gender recognition certificate whether they had the right to use women's toilets this is something that nick ferrari on lbc has asked again and again i'm very good friends with nick ferrari i love and admire him he, uh, he's a wonderful man um he keeps talking about should she be allowed to use women's toilets this is where we've gone wrong she should he should a trans identified man use the women's toilets then you have much less confusion don't you and he said he said that no the trans woman should not be allowed to use the toilets but this is a man whose MPs MSPs in Scotland agreed for trans men so trans women i.e trans identified men to be allowed into women's prisons even by the way you know the Ikes of Isla Bryson others who were actually rapists they voted for that they supported that this is a man whose, whose front benches are repeatedly saying that they believe that trans women are women he has not backtracked on whether or not um, some women have penises which I mean can they make up their minds on this no quite simply they can't they've got themselves into such a mess over this whole policy area they delved into it thinking that they could uh, again please everybody and have managed to anger pretty much every single community and I think that Keir Starmer really needs to understand what his position is he needs to stick to it and tell his front benchers what that position is as well, well because listening to them on the radio is embarrassing been, it's been embarrassing this week it's it really has really bad they, they really bridget phillips and others they really jonathan, can't be, jonathan ashworth John, again jonathan ashworth again just yeah. being like he was he was making a very glib joke and i've seen this all over social media like why is everyone so obsessed yeah. with where, where people go to the toilet i tell you who's obsessed with it because we're mums, right? Yes. It, it, mums and dads quite really quite keen to know who's going to be in the toilet when Precisely. our teenage children are in the toilet. I'm sorry, yeah. no man I know wants to intimidate a woman in the toilet. People, get, no woman I know wants to come out to find a man. No one wants the unisex toilets. No one, no one wants unisex toilets. This whole oh. like. I mean, just, we, you know, the office Christmas party a few years ago was it, when it was in a, a, a pub down the road, well, the big bar sort of area down the road, and they had unisex toilets. The women established within about 20 minutes of arriving, 
this one's ours get the hell out that one's yours and it was just and, and there was always a woman standing there going yeah i don't think so off you go mate i mean i'm sorry we were having none of it not playing not playing but most women don't want they don't i just find it utterly bizarre and then people say you're obsessed with it women have to be obsessed with it in yes. the same way that women are obsessed with looking round behind them when they're walking down the street at night yeah absolutely and i'll let you sorry in, for being obsessed let you into a little secret when i was at the home office we also had gender neutral toilets uh, there were two sets and the women decided that the women's were on the right and the men's were on the left and everybody was happy with that because if you're going in there to change your tights or yeah. touch up your makeup do your hair whatever it is I don't need a man standing there no. judging me or and I think they get very uncomfortable as I well so we all had the agreement like you did at your party yes. I, that we would I think separate. I think men most men are very very uncomfortable about yeah. it and especially you know my husband's six foot three being a sort of loser like, at an airport in France and you know there were, there were, there were you know 12 year old girls coming out of the cubicles and the men having to stand there and like you know you know you're looming over these yeah. little girls you, and you know you're intimidating and and you're yeah. trying to stand there sort of not being not intimidating looking, yeah. yeah I mean not making and, and it's just uncomfortable for everybody some tiny minority some 0.001 percent of people thought this was a good idea we've all had to have it imposed on us and I think people have had enough and by the way if you've got gender neutral toilets in your kids school yeah that's not allowed right mm. that's not allowed get that change get the other mums and dads together and tell the head go to the governor go to the local authority that's not allowed your child is allowed to have a you know a, a mm -hmm. toilet just just for girls and toilet just for boys it is just it's, we have got to fight back stop worrying about being called a bigot or a transphobe it is not bigoted or transphobic to check to, to protect women and girls single sex spaces and i'm so fed up i mean there's a lot of tories look you know plenty of tories have been <laughs> rubbish on this issue rubbish on this issue trans women and women oh like me like me like me i'm sorry but labor are so bad on and, and, and the lib dems and the greens mm -hmm. they all so so bad on this issue they don't know what they think they're muddle heads and they get into this thing where like oh well yeah well no well obviously trans women are women and and some women have penises and it's not right to say that only women have cervixes and 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 we're just period havers and 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 all of that but but um but but yeah but but we, well, obviously we don't want we don't want trans women in women's prisons if they committed rape oh how could they have committed rape oh oh because they've got a penis <laughs> oh is that because they're a man i mean you get into this madness yeah. only because you start from the premise of saying that trans women are women and you start using pronouns like she and her mm -hmm. and that's when you get into the mess we could just be really clear trans identified men are men they never become women they can put on a wig they can grow their hair they can take as many hormones mm -hmm. as they want they can they can live their life wear what you want call yourself what you want have your best life live your best life i hope you'll be happy but you don't get to encroach on women's hard won hard fought for safe spaces we we needed those spaces because of men not all men most men are great most men are lovely most men don't want to do anything to harm women but some men do want to harm women and the thing is we don't know which ones you are so we don't want any of you in our safe spaces why is that so complicated claire it's really not but it doesn't affect men does it because they don't have their spaces invaded by anybody they I have occasionally gone into a men's toilet but i don't think i mean probably i'm too intimidating to go i was going to say I, I, i'll row back on that position if i were you but, you, but, but it is different going there and frighten I'm, people but it, but it is different. but it is different because if you're a six foot three man you've got you coming in yes they might be intimidated but for the majority it's not going to be a problem for them they use no. their changing rooms they've got their yep. spaces that's absolutely fine they also don't really and i understand that men do suffer domestic uh, abuse yeah, absolutely but they aren't in a need of a refuge as much as women yeah, are. exactly it's just completely different